Welcome to the Rain Sessions podcast powered by SwingJuice.com. I hope you enjoy it. And if you like it, please subscribe. Today, we talk to Hollywood veteran and certified golf madman, actor Kevin Rahm. How you doing? Good to see you, John. Thanks for, uh, thanks for joining us. How's it? You know, we always, we've kind of opened up with the standard question. How is life under this, this quarantine, this new normal that we're, we're all living right now? Well, this is, this is what happens when you don't tell an actor they have to be on set and <laughs> get to look a certain way. This, this, just growth happens on their face. I don't know what this is. It's been a long time. Naturally happens, huh? Yeah. Uh, we're doing okay. So we're, I'm in Sacramento, and uh, yeah. Sacramento has been really lucky as far as contagion. It's been really low for the size of the city. Um, uh, you know, luckily my wife has a real job, so she's still working, which is nice, and mm-hmm. our daughter's home, which is nice and, uh, most days. And uh, and I got to I got to the, there's a muni, muni, muni up here called uh, Hagen Oaks that was an Alistair McKenzie oh, yeah. designed golf course. Yeah. Um, and so I've got to play that about three times. Uh, that's been open the whole time. Uh, so I've gotten out a little bit. A lot of walks, a lot of dog walks, a lot of uh, French and English study with my daughter and oh, math that's, uh, and that sounds geography. And I, I wouldn't call it exciting. It's a uh, it's a lot of work. The teachers, can we just say the teachers need to be paid more? Can we just uh, all admit to that? After, after this is over, can we just all agree that that should happen and make Let, that happen? I will. I will sign the petition twice. You know, my uh, my mother uh, was a school teacher. She's a retired school teacher, and I have two kids at home. So my wife and I have been going through the the homeschooling process as well. And they could not pay. They, teachers should be paid on the level of professional athletes after this after this uh, experience. Hundred uh, percent. We need to get them endorsements. <laughs> they need to be uh they, need, like, they have nike swooshes on their arm yeah, exactly to to school yep. uh, put them in some nice shoes so they can you know chase those kids around i i don't think we realize it's like, yeah, how old are your kids uh eight and four. Oh wow yeah we have a five-year-old so i understand the fourth thing with the eight at least i feel like with an eight they can there's a lot they can do on their own with a, with yeah. a five-year-old i mean she wasn't even she doesn't even start kindergarten until the fall hopefully yeah but um Same here. uh it's like, what do you, you know, there's only so much they can do online, you know? So I had, I had bought a book called, uh, this when she was like two, I got really aggressive and bought a book called teach your kid to read in a hundred lessons. Mm-hmm. My wife found that because I never opened it once it came in the mail, but my yeah. wife found it and they're like on lesson 65 right now. And I've been doing French with my daughter. My, what, what I'm scared for is when it comes to common core math, because I used to be good at math. That's what you turn around and just leave the room. I I can pencil whip anyone. You give me an eraser and I can beat you. But um, but (laughs) teaching someone Common Core, I mean, like I'd have to relearn it all over again. Uh, well, math is completely. They teach math completely different than when when we grew up. I mean, it's it's literally another language. I mean, it's unbelievable. And my four year old, she doesn't even know what day it is half the time. It's just like you know, it's all it's all one big weekend or vacation. I mean, she's you know. It's just trying That's to welcome welcome to the life of an actor. They just tell me where to be the next day. I don't know what day it is. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Do I do I have to work tomorrow or not? When do I have to shave again? That's all. Exactly. I, that's exactly. all I, just tell me when I have to shave again. That's all. Literally one day at a time. Yeah. <laughs> so let's uh, let's talk a little bit about your acting career. I mean, you you've been on some iconic you know television shows and series. You know, Madam Secretary, Mad Men, Friends. What what are some of your current projects that you're working on, and some future you know, projects that you have going on? Uh, so right before we shut down, everything shut down, um, uh, I just finished production on a pilot uh, for HBO Max, the new streaming service, which I yeah. think launches soon in the next mm-hmm. couple of weeks. Um, it's called Vegas High, coming of age story of a young girl in Las Vegas who happens to be Mormon. And it's based on the real life experience of our writer, Sarah. Sarah uh, and she, it's her story. It's the girl they found out of Louisiana is amazing. She's playing mm-hmm. the lead. Um, just a great cast, great crew. We had a really good, really fun shooting it. And so we're still waiting to hear if that, uh, if they're going to pick that up for series or not. Um, but uh, that, that was the, I had just finished Madam Secretary. I just come back from New York when I shot that. Yeah. Um, and then, then everything shut down. So, you know, who knows what's going to happen next or when we go back and how we go back. That's the real question. Yeah. So do you, get, do you get any guidance from your representation or the studios? I mean, do they, they're just kind of waiting, waiting in line like everybody I think, else. I think everyone just kind of waiting to see, I mean, I'm sure everyone's doing their due diligence about of looking at, looking forward to how to do that. 
Yeah. Um, I'm sure the unions are. Um, I'm sure the studios are. I imagine a lot of it's going to do with insurance. Mm-hmm. I mean, if two of your main actors go down or your DP goes down for two weeks, like is insurance going to pay for those two weeks of production that you're out? Or are they going to keep going? I mean, that's, that's probably going to be the biggest issue. I mean, obviously other than keeping everyone healthy and safe. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, no one, no one knows anything at this point. I know everyone's trying to ramp up. I know people have, they've announced on networks of shows they've picked up for the fall, mm-hmm. but you know, they need, you know, normally right now they'd start, they'd be in writer's rooms can happen obviously like this online. Um, sorry, that's my, uh, let me turn off my mail. But um, obviously, writers' rooms can do that online. But once you get into production, you know, I don't know how soon that's going to happen. Yeah, no, it's it's you know, like like we've talked about. I'm sure everybody said the same thing. It's like you know, the the world's been flipped upside down for you know forever in in some in some aspects in some walks of life. But it's just we're just trying to get by. Um, but what is my question is what's going to be the you know like my favorite one of my favorite things in the world is to finish 18 take my hat off and put my hand out and shake a hand and say good game hopefully as i'm taking their money but <laughs> not always the case sometimes um but what, 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 we gotta we gotta find <laughs> we gotta find what's that thing that we get to do i mean do we take our hats off and bow or do we like do we do the elbow do the what, what's the thing there's something you know, there's, there's, it might, it's I'm a, it, it, you might be in charge of this this new uh, this new celebration strategy because you know we're we're, moving, we're migrating to the elbow bomb, you know. Uh-huh. You take your hat. So now a lot of cores. I don't know if it's, I don't know if when you played Hagen Oaks if they if they have the the cups where you, the ball doesn't go all the way. It's like a bumper. Yeah. So you know how long is that going to last for? Is that going to last all season this year? Or I mean, it's there's going to be a new normal for sure. Yeah, very new normal. And I'm talking about the raking bunker. No bunkers. No, I mean you yeah. know they'd filled in a. Uh, at least half the bunkers at Hagen had been filled in. And I don't know if that was part of a process that they were doing anyway, if they were going to move them or something, or if that's just something they did to avoid the trouble, to avoid the, but yeah, it's just, it's going to be interesting. Yeah, yeah, it it definitely is. It definitely is. So what would you say out of all your, 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 you know, television movie roles that you've had, like what's been your favorite so far? And also, uh, you know, what's one of the ones that, you know, you, you haven't played yet that you'd love to, to kind of cross off your, your, your actor bucket list? Um, you know, in college, you know, studying theater in college, every young guy wants to play Hamlet. Although mm-hmm. I'm sure that I, I, although Mel Gibson was much older than me when he did it, I think, but uh, that's, I don't really have that kind of, there's not a part out there that I'm dying to play that I haven't played. Mm-hmm. I, also, I, I, I'm waiting to read the next script to see if that's it. Um, <laughs> uh, there's a play, I, there's a play I did in college called Waiting for Godot. Uh, by Samuel Beckham, did it with my best friend Todd Parmley, and I would love to revisit that play. If there's one play I could go back and do again, yeah, because we did it. We were, you know, it's about existential dread and existential crisis, and we were, you know, twenty something, early twenty. So like, we got the comedy aspect of it. I felt that like, I don't think we even tapped the surface of the the fear of looking into the abyss. And I feel like as, as someone who's you know late forties, going to be fifty soon. I would I would have a better understanding of that part of it, and I can also grow more hair on my face now. Which is well, that would that would be a plus. That would be a plus. Do you find <laughs> that a lot though? Do you find that a lot? Do you constantly think in your head like, if I could play you know a role that I had ten years ago now, would I approach? Not it? A, not every role, but I mean obviously as you change, you you bring more. You can bring more. You have more life experience to bring. Yeah. Like I, I, and so there are a couple of parts like that, that I look back and like, I would love to try that again. My favorite is, especially in television where everything's so fast, where you get mm-hmm. a script on a Monday and you're shooting one of those scenes tomorrow, right? So you only have so much time to think about, to make choices, you know, you're making the fastest, best choice you can in the moment. Yeah. It's inevitable. And in every play that I've done and half the TV shows that I've done, you finish a scene, you, I go to bed, I wake up the next morning and I'm like, oh, Oh, that's what that means. And it happens even more so in plays. And you've done, I've, you know, I've done a play a hundred times, 150 times. And the week after the play's over, I'll wake up one morning and go, Oh, that's what that line. I'm supposed yeah. to do a line like that. What was, what was I thinking? How did I not get that? So there's, there's always a little bit of that, but um, as far as parts, that's the only one that really stands out. And as far as work, I mean, I've been very lucky um, with the jobs that I've had. I think Mad Men was, you know, obviously just because it was part of the zeitgeist is one of the most uh, compelling. Um, and just to walk into that group and be a part of that group. Amazing and, series. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So you're phenomenal. But then on, you know, just recently, Madam Secretary, mm-hmm. you know, 
I've known Bar Barbara Hall created the show uh, Judging Amy that I was on for three years back in the day. And so she created, I know we've been friends ever since, she created the part for me of Mike B. So that was also a new thing where it was, it was literally written for me and my voice. And that was uh, fun and daunting. Because at least with an audition, you have the chance to prove how you're going to do it. And then yeah. you show up on set and they're like, let's see if this works. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if they were right. Hire me. So walk me through like a typical day on set. You know, what, what is what is it behind the scenes? You know, like on, you know, maybe you can maybe you can work it where it's like a, if there's rehearsals on you know, during the week and then the day you're shooting. Like, how, What does a typical week look like? Well, um, well, there's there's two types of uh, show production, right? There's the single camera show and the multi camera show. A multi camera show is like a Friends or a, a Big Bang Theory, you know, where you rehearse. You, technically, you start on Monday, you have a table read, you rehearse Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Mm. Thursday, you you block it with the camera people, and then on Friday night, in front of an audience, you shoot all of it in in a row. Yeah. Um, that's a that's a sitcom or a multi cam. Uh, single cam or dramas. Um, it takes eight to 10 working days to shoot one episode unless it's Game of Thrones and I don't know how really? many. Wow. Um, but so you're, you have twice the amount of pages, but you only shoot seven pages a day. So seven to 10 pages a day. So you'll shoot one to five scenes, depending on how long they are in that one day. Um, and, you know, usually you start at a really early hour and you go till late hour. And then if you start on Monday at six and you finish at eight, on Tuesday, you got to start at eight and you finish at 10. And on Wednesday, you start at 10, you finish, at, you know, and so you're starting later and later in the week. Mm -hmm. um, it's a lot of hurry up and wait. It's a lot yeah. of uh, a lot of time setting up, moving the camera, repositioning the lights, making sure your hair and makeup's fine, make sure your costume looks the same, making sure everybody knows their words, and then you do that same scene over and over and over and over again until they get all the pieces they can cut together and make it look good. Wow. And so do you? I mean, do you get to a point where you know maybe it's towards the end of a production that you, you truly are that character that you're playing? Like, do you, how does it take you time to decompress? Cause I've heard stories of, of various actors that get into these really deep roles and all of a sudden they become that person. Um, I've, I've never become the person. I mean, Mike B was probably the closest to me just cause like I said, it was written for me. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think I'm as sardonic as him, although I can have moments. Um, uh, I did a, I did a movie in between the pilot and the first episode of, uh, of Lethal Weapon, I did a movie for Netflix called Clinical, mm -hmm. where I played a guy who had a facial transplant surgery. So every day I had to go put on this face mask that took about two and a half, three hours to put wow. on, and then about an hour to take off every day. And so that, and it was pretty dark. That's a psychological thriller, and it's pretty heavy. Uh, that one took some time to shake off. Um, yeah. Plays usually take longer to shake off. Mm -hmm. for me because in television it's um i'm I, I less other than that movie i'm not playing the serial killer or you know something like that so i don't have that kind of weight but it plays that i've done where it's heavy those sometimes take a while to just get out of that mindset you know yeah. cause it takes longer to more energy to ramp up into that wow that's uh, you know it's fine like i said I've, I've read all these stories and i i can see how it can happen i mean it's you know, if you're studying so much and it, it just happens on a, on a regular everyday life basis. If it, something's in your mind constantly and you go to sleep. You yeah. Do I it mean, it, it's going to, if, 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 if it, it can't help, but affect you. Um, mm -hmm. now, you know, then you have the difference of someone who's method, who believes they have to be the person in the moment and call me by the character name and all that stuff. I'm not yeah. really that way, but I think on some molecular level, it's, it has to affect you. Yeah. You know, if you're crying every night on stage because you lose a child, it's, you know, it's going to, Come into your life a little yeah bit. exactly it's tough i can see how that's that's tough to shake you know yeah um so let's, let's switch gears a little bit you know speaking of like you know mental capacity talk about your golf game talk about uh how you got into the game of golf and uh what continues to, to drive you back to it so i i grew up in louisiana where a lot of people play golf and i remember friends leaving the uh a boat on the lake with girls and beer to go watch the masters on a Sunday back when it was a tiny little TV and it was like highlights and you couldn't see it cause it wasn't HD. And I'm like, yeah. what's wrong with you? What's <laughs> wrong with you that you're leaving? And I didn't get it yet. Uh, when I moved to LA, um, I had just done this indie film and I met this, a really good friend of mine still to this day named John Putch, who's now a director. He was an actor at the time. And he gave me some really good advice early on. 
uh, he said two things to me. He said, "Hey, keep your overhead low. You know, you know there's, you're going to make a lot of money in, in spurts, and then yep. you're gonna, not going to make some money. So keep your overhead low yep. so you can survive." Great, right? great advice. Some of the best advice I ever got. Great advice. And then he said, "Find a hobby, preferably outdoors, mm-hmm. especially in Southern California. Right? We got you know it rained 10, 15 days a year, and otherwise it's beautiful. And so I there was a muni course there's par three um, called Whitsit Pitch and Putt." And it's a walking par three driving range. And every non-working actor who doesn't belong to a golf club is at that par three hitting balls and walking those par three drinking a beer. Yeah. And so I started, that's how I started. I got literally got a full set at Costco, you know, one of, like a generic full set yep. and would go to, um, um, uh, yeah, like off the rag. Yeah, I've, yeah I've, just, I've been I've been down this road, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so that and I think I started with that, and then I ended up going to like a play it again sports or whatever, where you get to use clubs and buy yeah. some. I, I bought like a used pitching wedge and nine iron, and we would go out there and hit balls and drink beer and walk the you know walk nine twice and uh, like think the longest holes are one thirty five, which is a great way to learn how to play golf, right? Absolutely. You know? um, and then it just kind of grew from there. I had some friends who were into it. We drived all the munis all around L.A. and um, and then I had a friend, John, uh, oh, what's John's last name? John, it'll come to me in a second. He was the head makeup, head of makeup on Desperate Housewives. Mm-hmm. Um, and John was part of a group that was going to go to Ireland to play golf. And at this point, I'm playing once a week, sometimes during the week. And, well, you know, hadn't joined a course yet or anything like that. But I was, you know, I was probably a 15, 16 handicap. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and he said, someone dropped out come with us to Ireland. And I was like, I don't know. You know, I was recurring on housewives and I have a full-time job, you know? And I was like, yeah, we'll see. And my wife was like, Oh, you have my now wife. She was my girlfriend at the time. She's like, you have to do that. Like that's a once in a lifetime. It's the trip set up. It it was crazy and expensive um, for what we got to do. She's like, Oh, you have to say yes. You have to do that. So you immediately knew she was a keeper right then and there. Oh, like she, yeah. I was like, yes. (laughs) <laughs> that and when she told me not to sell my motorcycle i was like okay oh, we're, we're, okay mean, we're good like where did we're you good. come from <laughs> where, where, how did how would i get so lucky is that, am i being um, punked am i being punked right now oh and my wife if before pre-coronavirus if i'm home for more than two weeks or three weeks in sacramento i start to go a little stir crazy yep and she's like why don't you go to la and play golf with your friends like and what she's saying really nicely is get out of my house get away from me. driving me crazy <laughs> <laughs> she does it in such a nice way um but that was the oh, that, that would convince me too. That would convince me right? too. Just you yeah, know, all right, yeah, you know, that's a great you know what? idea. You're right. I should. I should do this. <laughs> that that's true. We next the next year we went to Scotland, and those those two summers were what really sweat. That's when that's when uh, I got serious, and I ended up joining a club in L.A. Um, and then the best part about my gig, I'm one of the few people in the world that I play more golf when I'm working than mm-hmm. when I'm not, because when I'm not working, I'm in Sacramento and I'm dad. You know, I'm doing laundry, I'm making dinner, I'm taking my daughter to school. Yeah. But when I'm in LA working, my wife and daughter are in Sacramento, so I have there's no one at my apartment down there, so I just go play golf. Yeah. And so you'll you'll see, you'll look at my handicap, and it's like when I'm working, when I'm not working, it goes up. When I'm working, it goes up. <laughs> you can tell it's without Kevin's on set. And then Kevin, Kevin's Kevin, Kevin Kevin's, Kevin's working two days a week, just playing four rounds. Is that is that when you get all your uh, tournament invites when you're when you oh, yeah. when you when you uh, oh, yeah. when you get the job? Oh yeah immediately and you want to yeah the, the the joke in show business is you you want to get a job plan a plan a trip <laughs> minute you plan a trip and buy a ticket someone who calls you says they need you to work right so who's part of your uh, your golf crew like do you have a do you have a normal um uh, uh yeah so uh, i belong to lakeside in la mm-hmm. um uh kunal nayar is a good buddy of mine we play a lot together frank fonseca my buddy Britt johnson who was my sponsor there um here in sacramento uh Bradford Anderson, who's a soap actor, he and his wife live here as well. So we 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 played the Muni together here. Um, who else? Chris Jacobs is a is a regular Galen Garing. I don't know yeah. if you were at the, you were you were at the Warburton, the guys I did yeah. Beastie Boys with. Yeah, Those absolutely. Guys, yeah. We, play, we play a lot together. That was tremendous. Um, we get we got a we got a uh, my Victor Lee, my buddy who lives in New York half the time and LA half the time. Um, we we have a junk game called Dots, and that's uh, we we play a lot of a lot of that together. It's a lot of fun. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of trash talking. Yeah, but that's like the best part of all of this, right? Oh, yeah, the money, lose some money, and then uh, <laughs> and then just do it all over again the next day. 
Yeah, yeah. So do you have a yeah, good yeah. like on course story? Something any any wild and crazy times? Uh, I the, the, well, the, 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 I have the well the best the worst decision. One of the weirdest decisions I ever made was on a golf course. We were this is my buddy Britt, who was my sponsor at Lakeside before I think before he had joined too. We were playing a Muni in L.A. Playing a and and we're on the golf course. We start drinking, and uh, he says, "Hey, Pearl Jam's playing tonight." at the amphitheater at universal do you want to go and all of us were like yeah and he had a contact a ticket so he bought tickets online and i was like i got a great idea we'll drive my truck because i was working on, on on the universal lot at housewives i said mm -hmm. i have a parking pass i can go onto the lot and then we can sneak in i know how to sneak in over from the lot into near the amphitheater and that way you don't have to deal with all the traffic well you know so a couple beers later i didn't bring i had flip-flops I didn't have shoes. And so I wear, I wear flip flops. We sneak in to the amphitheater, amazing concert. But then we realize we can't get back out. We can't get back into the thing. My keys, I, I, I don't have my pass. My pass is in my car. We have to walk down this hill. Now my feet are all cut up from <laughs> flip flops all day. <laughs> this is and the worst idea ever. Now down the thing. And then I have to convince the gate guard that my car is in there, even though I don't have my pass on me. And uh, they wait for me while I go get the thing. But we don't, I can't think of, there's nothing on course that was crazy. My buddy Britt, I, when I was on Housewives Parking in the, in the structure, you look down from the structure onto like uh, hole number 11 tee box. And he would always send me uh, choice photos with my car in the background and his finger up in the air toward me when I was working. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, again, it's all the trouble that you can get to on and off the golf course. It's uh but luckily, a, you're, you're removed. Like, you're in L.A., the family's in Sacramento, so you can kind of get away with more. I'm not getting enough. Post. Well, my wife loves it about because she knows where I am. When I'm in L.A., I'm, I'm either in my apartment, I'm at work, or I'm at Lakeside. I'm playing <laughs> golf, I'm working, or I'm sleeping. Those are the, yeah. that's, that's, I got nothing else. Yeah, you got the GPS tracking just. Yep, wildly, ride my bike in between the three. A lot of three places. <laughs> What about what about food? What you know? What about some of the, some of the good food spots in LA? You know, for for us and our brand, you know, we're into the golf and tacos and golf and pizza and all of those fun golf matchups. What what are some of your uh, you know your go to food spots? Go to food spots in LA: um, Asanabo sushi, golf and sushi, man. Yeah, Big sushi fan. Yes, um, um, that's especially after you you walk eighteen. It's hot, nice cold beer. Get a little sake. Have some sushi. It's not too heavy. Um, that's one of my favorites. Um, I think where else we go in LA. There's a great uh, little restaurant across from my apartment called Something Vegan. I'm not vegan, but they have great uh, curry, like mm. a great yellow curry with veggies. That is so good. I'm a big um, fan. I love Indian food. Oh, love, love Indian food. Um, uh, Rustic Spoon, great, great Indian place in the valley. Mm. Um, it's funny. I don't, you know, I, I <laughs> we do a lot of golf and pizza at lakeside it's like well, that's, that's, you know because you the plan is we're going to get showered and go to dinner and then you know after after a drink it's like why are we going anywhere we, we there's food here right they'll bring it to the, they'll bring it right to us right here why right. not just sit here and eat you know pizza and have one more beer yeah, and then i'll like ride my bike on favorite things like mashed up together you know it's perfect yeah. Yeah, it's absolutely perfect. Um, so you and I met uh, a little while back at the at the at the Warburton Patrick Warburton's uh, tournament golf tournament the, that yeah. benefits St. Jude. So talk about your involvement with St. Jude. I mean, you have uh, another tournament with with your namesake on it. Um, yep. So um, Clark Rainey runs uh, Patrick's tournament, and Patrick yeah. Patrick the second pilot I ever did in Los Angeles. Patrick and I were the two leads of the pilot. So I've known Patrick for. 20 years now wow. um and he's he had been bugging me to come but that first couple this was year 10 for patrick first couple of years i had just gotten into golf and i did not feel like i was did not feel confident enough in my game to be the quote-unquote celebrity in the group i was i would have been embarrassed um i didn't realize it didn't really matter because it's more of a hit and giggle um but uh clark bugged me and finally got me to go to patrick's tournament about six years ago and then about two years ago, uh, he calls me and I'm in the car with my wife and he goes, um, I have a question for you, Kevin. I'm like, yeah. He goes, I'm, I wanted, we want to do an East Coast version of Patrick's tournament. And we want you to be the namesake. At which point I'm like, well, obviously you've gone through the Rolodex and got to R and everyone else has said no. <laughs> so, uh, um, uh, but I, I, the, 
my personal connection to St. Jude is my first pilot was uh, Danny Thomas's son, Paul, uh, Tony Thomas, and mm-hmm. Paul Junger Witt had a company called Witt Thomas. They did soap, the TV show Soap. They did yeah. the TV show Golden Girls. They were huge, prolific uh, yeah. comedy creators. Uh, my first pilot was, was with them. Oh, and wow. They're the ones that gave me my start in the business. And so I got invited to a couple of St. Jude events through them early on. Um, and then the first time, anytime, if you haven't been yet, once this is all over, go to the hospital in Memphis. Yeah. Cause that will, ch- it, it changes everything. It's the most gorgeous, powerful, beautiful place that I've ever been to in my life. And I, I was telling someone earlier, I was like, I'm not, I, I didn't like hospitals. My mom was a nurse. There's a lot of death in my family early on and hospitals had a bad, I didn't, I didn't like being in them. Um, and of course I married a doctor. I don't know. That's weird. <laughs> but, um, uh, uh, I, but that hospital is different. It's the most, the vibe is so positive. Everyone's there, every color, every religion, every nationality. They all, they're all there for one purpose and that's to keep kids from dying of, of cancer, to give them a shot. And that it's, it's, it's to me, it's, uh, it's life affirming. It's, it's, it's humanity affirming. And uh, when he asked me, I, I said, I, I looked at my wife, she said, absolutely. And we said, we're in. So last year was our first year uh, Clark's goal was to re-raise $500,000, which I thought was uh, a, a lot for year one. And uh, I, my goals were a little more optimistic, um, a little more realistic, actually. My goals were that none of my friends from LA got arrested in Florida, <laughs> that everyone got to go home. Um, and back, so, and as far as I know, no one got arrested. Everyone went home um, and we raised $700,000 year one. That's a win-win. Thank you. That's a win-win win for everyone. All around. You know, when I when I was at the Warburton, you know, that, that is like probably one of the first times it really struck me like how amazing St. Jude is. And I've never been to the hospital. I, I've, I only saw, you know, the, the, the stories that they showed in the videos. And I you know, was fortunate enough to meet some of the families. Um, it really, it's like mind-blowing what, go, what goes on there. Um, yeah. It's something that, uh, you know, and I, I agree to a point you just made that, you know, it, it, most people, they have a connotation when they think of a, a hospital is, is a bad place, you know, a, a place you don't want to be at. That place looks like you actually want to go to and just kind of jump in and help wherever you can. Yeah, absolutely. And, the, and you know, people always ask me, why are you supporting a hospital in Memphis? Why aren't you supporting a local hospital? And the reality is, um, what St. Jude, one of the beautiful things St. Jude does is they share every bit of information they learn. Yeah. So if your kid gets a mild form, a milder form of cancer, and they're in a local hospital, they're using the St. Jude protocols to help your kid. Mm. It's the research they've done at St. Jude that is helping that kid in your neighborhood. And, and then you'd be surprised how many people from your hometown ended up having to go to St. Jude. Yeah. Um, and so it's, it's, it's helping the whole world as opposed to just one hospital in Memphis. Yeah, no, and, and again, you know, I'm, I'm sure they, they appreciate the work that you've done and, and all that you do for St. Jude. So, you know, it, hey, congratulations on, on you know, continuing a, gr- a great partnership. And, and it's, it, it, must, it must feel for you uh, that you've come full circle with this, you know, being involved with, you know, A, Danny Thomas, and then, you know, kind of s- slowly making your way through. And then now you've, you're at this point where you're, you know, you're really kind of a, you know, really Look, all, all the way involved in it. Just, just to be, I mean, that literally it's the least I can do. I mean, you know what I mean? Putting my name on it and I'm, you know, there are 50 people that do a lot more work leading up to the tournament than I do, obviously. There are people that are friends that live there in the area in St. Augustine that are doing all the legwork and getting all the thing, all the volunteers. So it's literally the least I could do to, to lend my name. Um, and I'm, I'm happy that I'm in a place where that, that helps in some way, yeah. you know? Um, yeah, but it's a good group of people. We we had to postpone. We were supposed to we were supposed to be there. Oh gosh, next week I think. Yeah. Was originally, yeah, that was when be we were supposed to be there. Yeah. Um, and we've we've postponed it uh, to the second week of September, September 10th to the 13th, I believe. It's uh, the romgolf.org um, is the link that'll take you to it and all the information about the tournament. But uh, we've postponed to September, um, and we're hoping that you know we can flatten the curve and everybody we can get to a place where we can find a way to make that happen in September. Yeah. Yeah. Fingers crossed that it happens. And if, you know, again, it's, you know, we're just going to take it day by day, but uh, you know, we're hopefully, hopefully I'll see you down there too. That's, that's not that's, all heroes wear capes, man. That's right. That's mask. right. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks again for doing this. We have one more little, oh, little here, segment here. Oh, there's, there's, your, you know, there's your breaking uh, car right there. This is going to, you know, the kind of, perfect segue perfect segue into the next segment <laughs> so this last segment is is a little show and tell it's like when you were okay 
So do you, do you and this is more for our, our, our streaming audience, you know, we're, we're doing okay. the audio version and the video version, but do you have anything laying around in the house that, you know, would be a, a fun show and tell for our, our, our rabbit right fan base? Look at this right there. Oh, well, yeah, that, that, that. Is it backwards? Really, no, it's, well, it's, 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 no, it's forward. Okay. It's forward. It's forward front and clear. There you go. A little, little mirror field yeah. head cover. Yes. That one, and I, one of my favorite, that was from, that was from Scotland. I would say this is my favorite from Ireland. Real Waterville. Oh, uh, how was that? My buddy, my buddy, Mark Murphy, um, who won Big Break Ireland. They're, I think they're replaying that on yeah, Golf Channel right now. Yeah, I remember Mark that. Mark yeah. Murphy, who won that, uh, we met, we met actually, it was really funny. So I go to Waterville and play. And that Ireland, by the way, if you want to go abroad, go play the old course, go play Muirfield, go play Carnoustie, but go to Ireland. And partially just because they welcome you with open arms. It is so much fun. But we played like seven courses. We're at Waterville. And uh, the woman who ran the food and beverage at the club was a fan of Housewives. Housewives was huge mm -hmm. the year we, I went to Ireland. Yeah. So you would have thought I was a rock star. Um, it was crazy. Uh, my friends were like, "No way, we know you. No one, no one cares." Like, about who you. are you again? Um, you're like, whatever, Rom. No, no one gives. No one cares. Um, but I, they were so lovely. I, I took a photo with this woman. They put it on the wall. We, they sang for us. They fed us crazy amount of food that we weren't expecting. So, it cut to like two years later. I'm playing in a, uh, a, a quarterback for Pittsburgh, uh, Roethlisberger, yeah. has a charity tournament outside of Pittsburgh. Get flown there. We go into the bar sit down and have a drink and there's Rocco Mediate and his buddy Mark Murphy who's, who's his caddy for a while and mm -hmm. he's still trying to get on tour at the time and Mark Murphy looks at me and he goes do I know you I'm like well I don't know I, I'm an actor maybe that's he goes, no hold on and he goes into his phone and just disappears into his phone and I'm like oh, that's okay I whatever man and so we're talking to Rocco and we're telling stories and blah 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 and then Mark comes back and goes hold on is this you puts up his phone and it's a picture of me and his mom on his mom's Facebook page. Wow. I'm like, yeah, is that Waterville? And he goes, yeah, that's my mom. My mom used to run the food and beverage. At is that right? <laughs> and she took a picture of you and I've seen your picture on my mom's Facebook. It's not because you're an actor. <laughs> wow. That's one of my, that was one of my favorite courses there. Gorgeous. Wow. That is amazing. That is amazing. That's like, that's like traveling around the world and seeing some, you know, meeting somebody that grew up in your right? home, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, what are you doing here? You know, like in Paris, meeting someone from Shreveport. Right. <laughs> My mother, my mother uh, grew up in Shreveport. Well, my, my no way. Parents, my parents grew up in Louisiana, so their okay. towns are like in between. Shreveport's like you know in the in the, in the middle of there. So I've been to Louisiana, you know. Basically That's where my wife and I, my wife and I, we met. We both grew up there, and we met in Shreveport. Yeah, so I I know that I know that part of the world very well. Love Louisiana. Love it. Love yeah. to visit. Love it. Yeah. So, you know, again, thank you for doing this, Kevin. Really, this is this has been this has been a pleasure. And, you know, again, looking forward to hopefully seeing you in, in, in at the tournament in September. But if not, we'll see you uh, sometime soon right there you now. Go. We'll definitely tee it there up. You go. We'll break we'll par. Be trying to, we'll be trying to do that in between. We'll be trying to break par. We'll be trying to break par. All right. Awesome. Thank you, John. Appreciate Kevin, it. Thank man. you so much, man. Have a great weekend. Stay safe. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. Please check out SwingJuice.com, the go-to place for golf and awesome t-shirts. Use promo code RAINSESSIONS20 for 20% off. Swing Juice, wear your passion on your sleeve.